Welcome back. I'm Veronica, and this is Science News Every Day. An astronaut on the International Space Station is coming home on a medical evacuation flight for the first time in history. Here is what happened and why it matters. NASA announced on January 9, 2026, that it will end the Crew-11 mission early after one astronaut developed a significant medical issue in orbit. The agency says the condition is not life-threatening and the astronaut is stable, but managers decided that the safest option is to return the whole crew to Earth rather than try long-term treatment in microgravity. The four-person team had been scheduled to spend about six months on the station, performing maintenance and research. A spacewalk planned for this week was canceled as soon as the health concern appeared, and preparations began for an accelerated return. Several other astronauts will stay aboard to keep the station operating and to look after hundreds of ongoing experiments. This evacuation is a major test of NASA's medical contingency plans and a reminder that human bodies are still the most fragile part of long-duration missions. What the agency learns here will feed directly into planning for future lunar flights and eventual crews headed toward Mars, where coming home quickly may not be possible. In my view, this event shows that space agencies must invest far more in remote diagnosis and treatment tools for astronauts. It also highlights how medical ethics and risk tolerance will shape who gets cleared for deep space missions. Earth's oceans just reached their hottest level ever recorded. Again. Here is what happened and why it matters. On January 9, 2026, an international team of scientists reported that in 2025, the upper 2,000 meters of the oceans absorbed about 23 zettajoules of extra heat, more than in any year since modern measurements began. That is roughly equal to many decades of total human energy use being soaked up by seawater instead of the air around us. Because the oceans take in over 90% of the heat trapped by greenhouse gases, ocean heat content is one of the most reliable thermometers for climate change. The new studies stitch together independent temperature records from research centers in China, Europe, and the United States to make sure the warming trend is real and consistent. The heat is not spread evenly. Parts of the tropical oceans, the South Atlantic, the North Pacific, and the Southern Ocean are warming especially fast, helping to drive stronger storms, heavier rainfall, and longer marine heat waves that bleach coral reefs and stress fisheries. In 2025, about 16% of the global ocean surface hit record values, and roughly a third of the ocean ranked among its three warmest years ever. Even more worrying, 2025 was the ninth year in a row to set a new record for ocean heat. I think this relentless ocean warming is one of the clearest warnings that the climate system is badly out of balance. It implies that even if we cool the air, the heat already stored in the seas will shape weather and sea level for generations. Scientists say a new kind of sodium sulfur battery could be safer and much cheaper than the lithium ion cells inside most phones and electric cars. Here is what happened and why it matters. Engineers in China have built an experimental battery that swaps expensive lithium for abundant sodium and sulfur, while still reaching high voltages. Earlier sodium sulfur designs worked only at low voltages and relied on thick layers of reactive sodium metal, which made them bulky and raised safety concerns. The new cells use an anode-free layout with a sulfur-based cathode, an aluminum foil current collector on the anode side and a specially tuned sodium dicyanamide electrolyte that does not burn easily. By carefully choosing that electrolyte, the team unlocked a different chemical pathway so the battery operates at about 3.6 volts, similar to common lithium ion cells. In lab tests, prototype pouch cells delivered energy densities that rival or beat many commercial lithium batteries, and cost modeling suggests packs could be built for only a few dollars per kilowatt hour of capacity. Demonstrations show the batteries still powering an LED even after the casing is sliced open, underlining the potential safety benefits of a non-flammable electrolyte. At the same time, some ingredients in the electrolyte are corrosive and unstable in air, so engineers will need to redesign packaging and chemistry before this is ready for factories or vehicles. My view is that breakthroughs like this are essential if we want massive energy storage without relying on scarce lithium. 
If even part of this performance can be scaled safely, it could reshape grid storage and lower the price of clean power worldwide.